Wow. Okay, y'all beat us this time. We've had several concerts where we're larger than you. But dang, thank you all for coming in on uh, such a gorgeous day that turned cold. Um, we're really excited to perform for you what we've been working on since uh, September. And so it's gonna, we're just going to start it off. Um, it's kind of the goal, just to let you know, for the cello choir, for me personally running the cello choir, I love that whoever wants to be in cello choir and join us can join us. And anybody, yes. <laughs> so we have a lot of varying different abilities up here on stage and a lot of people that have been playing cello for one year, a lot of people have been playing cello for 27 years. So, um, which is, that's scary actually. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're gonna start off this piece. Did everyone get a program by the way? Okay. Um, then you know what we're gonna you know we're gonna play. I'll tell you about it in a second. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Uh, has anyone heard Johnny Cash sing that song? All right. That song is written before him by a man named Trent Reznor from the band Nine Inch Nails. And this is how I do a cello choir. If you haven't been here before, which I am, think a lot of people, who hasn't been here before to see cello choir? Okay. <laughs> like half the room. Well, welcome. We're happy that you're here. I've been directing the group for about five years now. Um, and just, it's like my favorite thing to do in the world. So I'm, I'm real happy to be up here on stage. I'll tell you a little bit about that song. Trent Reznor wrote it. Uh, it's on the Nine Inch Nails record. Um, he's the lead singer and songwriter of the band The Nine Inch Nails, and the CD was called The Downward Spiral. Um, as it is when it's anyone's song, you know, he had it, took it really personally. Johnny Cash's people approached him about covering that song. Johnny Cash has his, his life story to associate with that song and all its lyrics. And Trent Reznor was, you know, dismissive at the time. But then he said after Johnny Cash recorded it, he said he had tears, goosebumps. He felt like he lost his girlfriend because the song wasn't his anymore. <laughs> so, and Johnny Cash was 70 years old when he recorded that. Um, after the, the video released in uh, 2003, he was 71 years old and he, uh, he died. He died seven months after the release of the video. June Carter died three months earlier. Um, and another tragedy, that house burned down that the video was filmed in in 2007. <laughs> this next tune we're going to do um, is just swashbuckling fun. It's called The Medallion Calls. It's from the movie um, The Pirates of the Caribbean, right? And I've got to get my notes here. Um, they had a... There's not much to tell about this. This is basically just a movie score that's super, super fun. But um, the Jerry Bruckheimer, who directed the film, he hired one composer, then fired that one composer, tried to hire Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer said, I'm too busy, and uh, referred him to this unknown guy named uh, Claus Badelt, or Badel. And uh, anyway, we'll see what he did now. We're he hasn't heard it like this with so many cellos before. This arrangement, by the way, is not my arrangement. Um, and up until now, actually, in cello choir, almost everything that we've done, I've, I've been putting together. So running a little experiment of some other people's arrangements. I worked out a, or I just made an, a relationship with another cello choir, another cello choir in Virginia. So we swapped some arrangements back and forth. So I'm going to send her the video of this one. She's going to send me the video of the other one. And uh, we're going to be best friends. <laughs> This is the medallion cult. 43? 43? Oh, one second. I forgot I want to get a recording. Mm. 
That's a good time. Um, we're gonna go dark again, sorry. Uh, this next tune is by Queen, another arrangement that was part of my, my deal with Ren, Renier. I noticed I didn't say her name, but Erin Renier is who wrote these, these, that arrangement and this next one. I didn't even know about this song until she showed up and had an arrangement for it, but some of y'all might if you like the movie Highlander, which is a feature in the movie. And, um, uh, well, I was trying, uh, Braveheart, Mel Gibson's character, I swear, just the costume and dress, if you want, go back and watch Highlander, is the exact trade, she just took it right out of, out of there and stuck it in. Anyway, um, this soundtrack has been recorded by Seal, or this song has been recorded by Seal, Pavarotti, Sarah Brightman. Um, it's a beautiful song, actually, that just kind of talks about how forever is, exists in a moment. And like this little, like you think of forever as forever, but the purpose of this song is to make forever feel like, or right now feel like forever. So the song's called Who Wants to Live Forever. next series of pieces, uh, this, it will be a three movement piece. Um, we're just going to go right through it, so if you could do the whole classical music thing and refrain your, from applauding in between, I think it'll be a nice, nice feeling for us to all go through together. Uh, this tune actually, DMO, oh, I got an email, yeah, oh, it's not on my phone. So the composer, we are all like, we played this last semester in the summer, <coughs> the first movement. Um, I, I, we had been talking about and guessing what DMO might stand for. I contacted the composer today, actually, this morning, as I'm preparing to do all this stuff, and she actually wrote me back about 30 minutes ago and said that DMO is just the initials of one of her friends that she, um, and I wish I could have read it to you, but I've been recording with it this whole concert, so anyway. Um, but anyway, it's nice to touch, reach out and, and, and have the composer reach back, which is really, really wonderful. Um, 
this composer, uh, Cheryl J. Atwell. She's uh, from Kentucky, that's where she lives. She's written many pieces for string school orchestras, like probably about a hundred of them. And I really found this interesting. She um, took three years to write a ballet based on the um, ancient Ominid Lucy, which she used to be the oldest Ominid, and then, uh, and then they found an, an older one is the end of that story. <laughs> 500,000 years earlier, an Ethiopia named Littlefoot. This is it. Okay, DM up. Let's go.
That was Jen Mulhern there on the back with the solo. I love Jen to death. I'm so sad she's leaving town. She's been, over the past two semesters, kind of kind of my compatriot with the uh, cello choir ideas, recordings, and coming together. So what, what happens with this is um, we record all the parts so that people can practice along with the recordings and be able to get their part, answer a lot of questions that way. Um, so that's a behemoth task. And thank you, Jen, for helping us. Um, we're going to finish out our show with, actually, I can tell you that it's, it's probably one of the first moments that I realized how magical and awesome music is was with this piece, Night on Ball Mountain. I was in the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra, which is a, um, which is a program in Dallas-Fort Worth area. They have four orchestras. I was in the next to highest orchestra, my first time being in a full orchestra with brass and winds and strings, and the top orchestra played this piece. And I remember, I remember this clearly. God, it must have been 14, something like that. And uh, just at that moment, I was not there. I was in that who wants to live forever idea. I was tranced out. And that thing just sat there for ages. And that's the end part of the song. Uh, this piece is a little spooky. It's been a spooky year. So, um, but it ends with this beautiful, beautiful melody. So I'll let you all take it away. I'll tell you a little bit about this piece um, as best as my shade tree musicology work goes. Uh, it was written by Mazursky. He is the official author, and everybody will tell you that. Um, he wrote some of the outline of this piece from what I read um, over a period of 20 years. He never actually really completed anything that he felt that great about. And he, and he passed away, like you do. Rimsky-Korsakov, it took six more years after he passed away. Rimsky-Korsakov, um, I guess, was such a fan, or Red was such a fan of Mazursky's, he actually finished quite a few of his pieces that did not officially get finished and performed. And the official version that we all, well, that, that started becoming performed was Rimsky-Korsakov's version of this piece with Mazursky's name. Rimsky-Korsakov uh, impressed himself he, as, as a quote said, it could not be improved upon, which I found delightful. <laughs> this piece has also been made famous in Fantasia, which was released in 1940. That version is actually another arrangement. You know it's a good piece when everybody's done it. A um, uh, conductor by the name of Stokowski's uh, version, and I didn't know this until I read it, but I have to go back and check it out and see if it's true. It's also the chase scene in The Wizard of Oz, The Wicked Witch of the West. So go back and check that out. Yeah, impressive, right? So um, I hope we can do it justice. This is a full orchestra piece with percussion, with bells, with everything. And we're just doing it with however many cellos there are up here. Anybody count? Does anyone know how many cellos are up here? 20. 20? Did you count? It feels, OK, good. Yeah. I believe it. I'm, glad I, I'm too busy to count, it feels like. so. All right, this is Night on Ball Mountain. Really appreciate y'all coming out to join us. I really appreciate everybody in the cello choir for giving all the work that you have done. And uh, this is Night on Ball Mountain. Hope you enjoy it. Let's